Hello my friends, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can start your journey inside of Affinity Studio, right? And um, how I ended up creating this logo that I'm going to use as an example in this video inside of this software. Of course, with easy steps that I'll be guiding you through from beginning to the end, right? Without having to say much, let's get started. So inside my interface, you can see that I have my logo. So I can scale down and scale up. I'm just going to scale up so I can see it clearly, right? I'm using a 1920 by 1080 um, for the page, right? So before I do anything, I'm just going to um, use my rectangle tool, right? Use my rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw a rectangle that covers the page like this, right? Over here in color, I'm just going to move the stroke click on set fill and i'm going to click on this for none right i'm going to leave it in white and i'm going to drag this down so that my image can be up right so i'm just going to leave that there i have plans for it actually um so back to my logo right so i'm just going to scale it like this you can see it's a sketch logo i'm just going to come up here and um, reduce the opacity so that i can work on this logo with my tools right so ctrl zero to fit the screen like this and middle of the page like this so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go come here select my pencil now these are the settings that i used i'm using a 1.4 and um, over here i'm using a 25 and i'm using this as um in case of this so I'm using the rope mode, right guys? I'm using the rope mode instead. So it's very important that you look my settings. Then for this, I'm using 100%, right? Which is the smoothness, 100%. So I'm just going to start. Um, let me bring this up so that I can see this well. Okay, so I'm going to select my pencil. This is the pencil here, selected. Then I'm going to come here and I'm going to do something like this. I'm just going to be tracing on the edge, guys. Tracing on the edge. Make sure yours is more perfect than mine. This is the first part. And I'm going to draw the second one. I'm going to make sure I have lines that are overlapping. And I'm going to have this here like this. Right? So you can zoom close to see what you are doing clearly so that you don't make mistakes. So I'm going to go around like this also. I'm going to keep tracing like this, keep tracing until I get here, I guess. Okay, so I have an overlap, overlap, very important. That's very important. Then for this part here where there's a line, I can choose to use this also to get that angle like this and uh, we're good to go. Right, so this is like more like the first step. So after I have done this, I'm just going to select everything. Right, I'm going to lock this so I don't get it selected. This is the background, this is a rectangle. Lock this also so I don't get it selected. Right, so I just have my shapes. So I'm going to select everything like this using the move tool. Right, when I select this, I'm just going to come here and select the shape builder tool. Right. Now, the first thing I'm going to do in the shape builder is I'm going to click on this minus. I'm going to remove the areas that I don't want. So I'm going to start here. Remove this, remove this, remove this. And uh, I'm just going to remove these areas like this, like this, and like this. Right? So that's the first step. The next thing I'm going to do is um, you can see this is done, done nicely. I'm going to um, select this one. I'm going to go to my node and I'm going to adjust this well so I have a good curve, right? Even if it takes me deleting this, I can just have one line and a good curve is all I need, right? And I can bring this downwards like this while I take this upward like this. Bring this down and um, we're good to go like this, right? So I'm basically going to select everything again like this 
and i'm going to go back to the shape builder tool here and i'm going to click on this plus sign now so i'm going to select this select this and select this what i just did is i just made them shapes on their own so you can see in the layers panel that i now have what three shapes right so i can now separate them if i want to actually right so basically i have no need for this guy here again so i'm just going to unlock this and hide this i'm not going to delete it i'm just going to hide this so the next thing i like to do is go and um select the primary colors now when i'm in primary colors i'm going to select this one first like this and i'm just going to give it oh yes that reminds me make sure you are not on the stroke so select none for stroke like this and make sure you are working on the fill color so for the fill color i'm going to change it here so if you're not comfortable with this wheel you can also switch and um, to your sliders and you have this to work with so you can change your colors here and uh, work with what's good for you but i'm just going to stick with the wheel and of course you have options for boxes also you can use your boxes you can select a color and um, use your box and all of that. I think I'm just going to use this box, right? Anything that makes it easy for you guys. So remove the stroke and for the fill color, I'm going to use colors. Remove the stroke, none, fill color, head over to where you have the blue. Okay. Right. As you can see that, right? So this is like um, the foundation colors. Now there is something we need to get rid of here. I can see that a couple of things here. So just in the layers panel, I can see them. So just delete them. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. So having done that, I'm going to come back here also and um, try to make this also smooth. So click on the node and um, with the anchor points i'm just going to take this up like this to create a smooth edge like this with the node right so like i said this is basic so let's um spice this up by adding some gradients to this so with this i'm just going to go over to my um okay still here i'm just going to come here go over to fill tool and i'm just going to add gradients to it like this right so it's going to go from dark like this to a lighter color so for the lighter color i'm just going to shift grounds here shift here and um, apply this um permit me to shift back to the wheels right this is one reason why i would like working with the wheel right so i can shift here and i'm using this right I'm going to switch to this part here, select this other curve and um, I'm going to do something similar. Uh, but this part is going to be darker parts and this part here is going to be like, you can see the color is already been recorded here. So this part is going to be lighter color like this. I'm going to move this downward just a little bit and um, move it this way. So for this part here, you can select on the layers or select directly, but I advise you to select here. So what I'm going to do here is the same thing, something similar, but this one from dark to light. So I'm going to use a lighter color here, but I'm going to move this dark parts just to make it obvious because I'm coming from a darker region here. For this one, I'm going to make it three. So I'm going to add, drag this out here and add another one. You can see the plus sign there. So you can click this one. I'm going to make it extremely dark but it's going to be blue so i'm just going to leave it like this bring it somewhere here right so you can see how this is this is done right so i have my first um part of this logo here so to complete this i'm going to select this ctrl g for this and i'm going to press ctrl j to make a duplicate copy of this i'm going to move this aside right another thing i'm going to do is i'm going to transform and flip horizontal transform again and flip vertical 
so with this one here i'm just going to move it like this and this is where it's going to be right so i'm just going to open this group up while i change the colors so i'm starting with this i'm just going to make primary colors for all of them so that and yes so this is what i'm mixing with so let's mix up these colors i'm going to start with this one so click on your transparency tool or click on g that's the shortcut right so if you have used coral draw photoshop you will know that this is the shortcut for your gradient tool so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go from the light from the dark region to the lighter regions right select this one also the same thing too but this one i'm going to have three points here this place is going to be very dark so i'm doing, going to bring this inside here like this and um, i'm good with that select this small one here right selecting the small one i'm going to go from dark to light here so let me zoom close so i'm going to go from dark to light but i'm going to have three sections here so i'm going to add another line to this for this i'm going to use a very very dark green which is this guy here for this i'm going to use another dark green but this time this and i'm going to leave this the way it is to make to create that special blend right this one i might want to adjust this a little bit so i can move this can move this upward here like this and um okay i think i'm good with this i'm good with this i'm okay with this okay cool so why i'm saying this is because i'm in a pixel mode so i'm going to switch here back to vector mode right you can see i've switched back to vector mode you can see everything clearly you can see that these are all vector images right good so um slight adjustments um i'm just going to go over to my node to and um i'll delete this right so i'm just going to delete this both places and um i'm good with what i have there so i'm going to select the two of them like this and i'm going to move them to this part here i'm going to make them smaller like this sorry so shift and control then scale them downward like this right let me bring it to be upward like this and i'm good with this so i can go and um, throw in some text okay so i'm going to change my text of course recent and i'm going with this I'm going to make the text bigger like this. I'm just going to scale it like this. And um, scale it up just a little bit. This, duplicate this. And I'm going to make this smaller. Like this. So double click on this. And um, highlight it. So this is going to be echo. Okay, so I'm going to use the dark green um, just to have a good blend. This should start here. Okay, good. Right. So I can highlight everything like this and move to the middle this way. So Ctrl zero to actually um, full screen and uh, I can delete my sketch since I no longer have use for it. Unlock this and I'm going to give it a base color. When I mean base color, I'm going to give it a green, right? I'm going to click on G for my gradients and um, I'm going to bring this outside but i'm going to go from green to white so i'm going to make this lighter and this mid parts will be white right so this can actually be a blend for what you want to do so i'm going to change this up here to elliptical right and uh, immediately i do that i'm going to position this well 
bring this here um scale up here like this so that i have the focus on this part then i can scale the entire gradient like this i'm holding down my shift to move this outside and voila this is what you have all right so nicely done you can um, blend this up you can let me move this outside just a little bit and um of course yeah so guys this is how you can start off your logo design journey inside of Affin studio so stay tuned don't miss other videos where i'll be showing you how to create some other cool beautiful logos inside of the software i'll see you in the next video ciao